What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Ashton Jackson, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Dallas Cowboys all-in approach. More looks like an all-in rebuild, and I'm going to talk about that more because of the recent departures and our lack of um, our, our lack of activity in free agency. So before we come to the video, I appreciate if you guys would like the video. Subscribe if you're new, comment, and share my video with, video with anyone who you think will enjoy my content. Straight man. into it. So from the last time I made my video about four days ago, uh, there has been more departures from the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, one being uh, Tyron Smith, who got signed to the New York Jets recently, just over the weekend, I believe on Saturday, he got signed to basically a one-year $6.5 million contract, and he can earn up to $20 million, two incentives, like if he plays X amount of games, he'll get more dollars. So if he plays like 13, 14 games, like how he did last season, he'll get, I believe... I think 19 to 20 million dollars he can get to the full length of that contract if he plays more than 10 plus games you know playoff super bowl he'll get a lot of more incentives like that but uh congrats for tyron smith um it sucks that we never were able to get a championship game appearance out of him or even a super bowl uh during his time and during him being in his prime uh, even last year he played a hell of a season he had an all pro type of season and for that to go to waste and for you to get bounced out in the first round really sucks. And I was really upset that we weren't able to uh, sign him back for the contract in which they did sign him to. They just only signed him to a one point, you know, signed him to a one year deal, $6.5 million that can earn up to $20 million due to incentives. So I know that sucks for us to lose him like that. Um, Rico Donald, we did resign him back to a one year deal. So it's more looking like. We're going to bring in Rico Dowdle back as our running back two and probably our third round or fifth round uh, running back is going to be a tandem with Rico Dowdle. Uh, Jonathan Hankins today got signed to the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, that's a really great pickup for the Seattle Seahawks and Jonathan Hankins is uh, rejoining his uh, defensive line coach Aiden Durde in Seattle. I think Seattle is uh, cooking something up over there. I think they're going to be a really great threat to the NFC, and that's another team that has gotten better than you. Uh, Noah Egbenogamy, in which you just basically swapped him in your second round pick, uh, Kelvin Joseph, to you know Miami. You guys just did an even swap. You lost him, now he's going to Washington. He's just going to be a special teamer. He's not great in uh, coverage, so I'm not really too worried about him leaving. But uh, like I said, the Dallas Cowboys uh, all-in approach more looks like a rebuild approach to me, in my opinion, just for the guys. If you just look at who on the screen that I put up, who's on one-year deals, you know, you got most of your all-pros and your core guys are on one-year deals. Zach Martin, one-year deal, that's one of your core guys. Um, if we find a way to replace him in this draft or even next year's draft, I wouldn't be too upset because... Um, Jack Martin is getting a little bit long on the tooth and it's time for, you know, he is slowing down. He's getting a little bit older. He's still an all pro pro bowler, but it's going to be tough for him because he's getting up there in age and, you know, eventually you're going to have to move on for him. And I'm fine with the Dallas Cowboys going into a different approach in terms of reworking this offensive line and getting it younger. So you have Zach Martin on a one year deal. You have uh, Dak Prescott on a one year deal, which doesn't make any sense because if you extend Dak Prescott you uh you free up 23 million dollars in terms of cap space you can go out there and sign more players than you want but already we're super lackluster in free agency I don't think we're going to do anything about that uh, Dak uh CeeDee Lamb's on a one-year deal he just came off of a hell of a season 1800 yards uh, broke records in terms of franchise and NFL records so not giving him at least into a uh, multi-year contract is uh, mind-boggling to me. I uh, got D-Law on a one-year deal. Easily could have been an all-pro, pro bowler type of player. He didn't get in, but still that's a really great player for your defensive line and for your defense in general. Him not him being on a one-year deal, you got to fix something about that. Michael Parsons is basically on a two-year deal. After this season, he goes into his uh, fifth-year option, I believe. So if you're the Dallas Cowboys, what are you going to do? Because if, if you're going to have a lot of these guys on one-year deals, just trade them. What's the point of, if you're not going to sign your guys now, 
if you're going to sign them in training camp, why are we waiting until July until they possibly are going to hold out for you to get a deal done? I think deals should be getting done now because that was my bare minimum expectation for this team. It wasn't to go out there and go get a Chris Jones. That was never my expectation. Uh, or to go out and go get a guy like Patrick Queen. That was never my expectation. I wasn't asking for a Derek, Derek Henry or a Saquon Barkley or a Josh Jacobs. Of course, I wanted... I knew we weren't going to get Chris Jones, and I knew we weren't going to get Patrick Queen. That's why I was like, hey, go get Devin White. Devin White went and signed to the um, Eagles for a one-year, $7 million contract. Understanding I know Devin White isn't who he used to be coming at LSU when he got drafted in 2019. I understand he's not that Devin White anymore, but I understand that that average or mediocre linebacker play from Devin White was way better than what we had last year. Uh, similar to Eric Kendrick. Eric Kendrick was really good for the uh, Chargers. And it was way better than our linebacker room than we had last year. So I was fine with bringing him in. Isaiah Simmons, I was fine with bringing him in. Um, Josie Jewell, I was fine with him. Blake Cashman, I was fine with that as well. I was fine with those lower tier level linebackers, bringing them in and helping us fill the need. But the main reason why I also felt like we went into rebuilds because the guys are on one-year deals. Your head coach is in a one-year deal. Your defensive coordinator is in a one-year deal. All your core glue guys are on one-year deals, right? Now, excluding the guys on, on um, rookie contracts like um, Tyler Smith, who saw his couple more years left on his contract. Deron Bland has another two years. Outside of those guys, your main core core playmakers are on one to two-year deals, and um, I don't know what direction we're going towards, right? Um, I'm fine with losing Tyler Biotis, Dorrance Armstrong, Tony Pollard. Uh, Neville Gallimore, Noah Egbenogamy, uh, Jonathan Hankins, Dante Fowler. I'm fine with losing those guys. But in terms for me, it was like, I don't mind losing talent. It is, who are you coming in to replace the talent? That's always been my my issue. I don't care who we lose. We can lose Dak Prescott for all I care for. But if we find a, a great way to replace him, that's fine in my opinion. If that's what the organization wants to do because... Again, we have no say in what happens up there in Dallas. So, for me, um, I can't trust this. I can't trust this organization to do a full-on rebuild. But I also can't trust this team to take a a good regular season team that consistently gets 12 to 13 wins every single year to turn them into a 14, a, a, a definite 13 or 14 win team that gets the number one seed and advances into the playoffs past the first and the second round i can't trust the organization to do that either so right now we're in a rock and a hard place because what do you want to do do you want to keep building on this thing and try to hopefully build a championship team but for but for the but for us to do that and for us to get to a championship we have to be more active in free agency we're never going to be a team that's heavily active in free agency um you have to make trades we don't make smart savvy trades you know the, the savviest I've seen as B was last year when we traded away our two fifth round comp picks to go get veteran help. Like that was something we've been begging the Dallas Cowboys to do ever since we ever since for the past 10 years, we've been asking them to do trades like that. But they finally did that last year. But this year they're trying to be like a they're trying to be hard A's and they're trying to be like, well, if we don't go to a championship game, we're not going to extend you guys. Like it doesn't matter because because at the end of the day, you're hurting yourself if you're not signing these players. So, in my opinion, I think that we need to extend Dak Prescott, extend C. Lamb, extend Micah, extend these guys, right? Because there's no point into trying to play hardball because the more you wait, the more expensive they're going to be. So, the longer you wait on Dak Prescott and you let Brandon Ayuk get a contract, Justin Jefferson get a contract, um, Jared Judy just got a contract three years, $58 million. He's not going to get anywhere the numbers like what CeeDee Lamb or Justin Jefferson is going to get, but you got to figure out that contract. Jamar Chase is going to be up for a deal. Jalen Waddle is going to be up for a deal. So there's going to be Amon Ross St. Brown is going to get is going to get a deal pretty soon. So if you're the Dallas Cowboys, you got to get got to get moving, especially with uh, CeeDee Lamb, uh, Dak Prescott for sure, because I don't find any legit way of you replacing him. Um, you're not going to trade any first round picks to go hit, go get a, a, ba- a better quarterback, but how many better quarterbacks are actually available better than Dak Prescott to actually go up and go s- snack from somebody, you know, like I'm not in the mindset of um, like you can't get Patrick Mahomes, 
You can't get Joe Burrow, can't get Josh Allen, you can't get Lamar Jackson, whoever, Justin Herbert, whoever these guys that people feel that are better than Dak Prescott, you can't trade them. They're on massive contracts. And though, and most of those quarterbacks I just named just got newly worked deals, and it'll be immense cap hits those organizations are going to have to endure uh, just to bring in like a Dak Prescott or for us to bring in a guy like, uh, let's say, Joe Burrow. It won't happen, but that would be a lot of draft capital. Uh, the Bengals will be stupid to do that because they're a contending team in the AFC when they're healthy. So we can't find ways to get better than Dak Prescott. And the only way if you want a guy like Shador who comes in next year, you're going to have to lose anywhere from 17 to 14 games to get a guy like Shador. So and with this roster, when we're healthy, we're at least a 10 win. That's our floor is 10 wins when this uh, roster is healthy. But again, um, I think we're... We're probably going into a retool slash rebuild situation. I don't know what we're going to do with the contracts because it doesn't make sense for us to wait until July, day near till we get to Oxnard for you to extend Dak and CD when they're possibly are just going to hold out until they get new deals. Uh, you losing Jonathan Hankins and you having to rely on a guy like Mozzie Smith from last year's 2023 draft class. Now, retrospect, now you're looking at that. Now, hindsight, right? Now you're looking at that class to really, really step up because now you're asking Mozzie Smith to play like an 11-year vet like Jonathan Hankins. Um, you got Carl Davis, who you resigned in the offseason um, to potentially come in and replace Jonathan Hankins, but getting a guy like Jonathan Hankins and replacing his production is going to be very tough. And you asking a second-year player who did not have a good first year to come in and replace a 10-, 12-year vet I don't see that happening. Um, he hasn't even made a step in the NFL where he showed positive strides yet. Like he hasn't put he hasn't put himself together a great game, let alone a great season, multiple seasons like Jonathan Hankins has had. For you to say, you know what, Jonathan Hankins, you can go. We're fine with Mozzie Smith. So again, you're relying a lot a lot about that. Uh, Tyron Smith, what are you going to do with the offensive line? Um, I don't think we're going to move Tyler Smith out to tackle. That would be my. A decision, but I don't think we're going to move Tyler Smith. I think we're possibly going to draft a guy like Jordan Morgan or Troy Fontenu from Washington uh, to replace Tyron Smith. Uh, you can possibly see Graham Barton uh, try to play tackle, or they might move him to center. I think Graham Barton for me is more of a center than he is a tackle, but he has that position flexibility. He can play all five positions on the offensive line. So it's going to be tough right now if you're the Dallas Cowboys in the way in which we're looking at it because we're not all in, right? My term, my definition of all in were to bring in some of your guys like Tyron Smith, Jonathan Hankins, um, Stephon Gilmore for sure. Getting him a contract would have made a lot more sense for you to bring him in as well because now if you're looking at the cornerback room, if Trayvon Diggs is back, you got uh, Deron Bland, you got Jordan Lewis, those are your three corners, right? Again, you're another injury away, another big-time injury away from your cornerback room looking like December 2022 when you have Kelvin Joseph, Nashawn Wright being your cornerback too and you're getting beat all game, right? So we got to look at that room. So we have a lot of major needs and we only have three top 100 picks. So that's another reason why I'm talking about a rebuild because we only have three picks in top 100 and you have about... If we're just thinking about the list right now in terms of need, running back, defensive tackle, linebacker, wide receiver, offensive tackle, or, or and offensive tackle, center, uh, D end, corner, and that's about it. So you're eight positions deep where you actually either need depth or starters, right? So since you're eight players behind the eight ball, you're in trouble. You only have three picks in the top 100. So that means you're asking to not only trade back because for your only way for you to get accumulate more tri uh, more picks between now and april is to either trade away players or you're gonna have to trade back so if you're the dallas cowboys come draft night if there isn't like a lot to lot to or a marvin harrison jr type of player at his position where they're top at their position that you high that you have high on your board and they're available at 24 that's the only uh possible uh, way where I'm like, okay, I got to stay at 24 and pick somebody like Brock Bowers is there or Vlatu Latu is there or Jordan Morgan is there. Uh, Jordan Morgan, if I think Troy, Jordan Morgan, if like uh, Troy Fatanu, Graham 
Barden, uh, Jordan Morgan are all available there at 24, and you can go down three spots uh, potentially to go snag one of those guys. I think that's fine in my opinion, but we got we got to see what happens draft night. Uh, Edron Cooper it would be a nice prospect for your linebacker, but like I said, you have eight needs. You only have three draft picks in the top 100. So basically, you're down. You're basically you're down five picks in which you don't have. So for you to even get those five picks to fill up the eight needs, you need to trade back uh, possibly every round you're in to accumulate more draft picks for you to feel comfortable enough to fill to fill some of the needs that are going on. Um, that's about it for the video. Hope you guys have a nice day. Stay safe, stay blessed. Bye.